So the former Home Secretary, uh, Suella Braverman, has said Rishi Sunak's new plan to save the Rwanda deportations is doomed to fail, a plan that she was championing just a week ago. Well, we're joined now by the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper. Good morning to you. I know that you're keen to talk about potholes this morning. We will come on to that. But just to turn first to the situation with Rwanda, because it is a bit of an awkward intervention, isn't it? So could you clear this up for us? Is the Rwanda plan going to work because Suella Braverman, who was at the heart of it until just a few days ago, is saying that it's not going to. Yes, it is going to work. And the Prime Minister set out very clearly on Wednesday our response to the Supreme Court judgment, which falls into two parts. One is that we're going to uh, rapidly conclude a new treaty with Rwanda and put that into law. We, ha we weren't just waiting for the Supreme Court judgment. We were working on things uh, as a contingency in the background. So that's the first thing that will, uh, I think, address many of the concerns that the Supreme Court set out in its judgment. The second thing is the Prime Minister said we're going to bring forward emergency legislation to make it very clear about Parliament's view that Rwanda is a safe country uh, in, to which we can deport people. That's necessary to break the back of the organised crime groups that traffic people across the channel. So that's a, a two-stage plan very uh, robust plan uh, and we're aiming to get that delivered so that we can still aim to get those flights first flights away in the spring in the as spring. part of our plan to stop the boats yes that's what we've said there's been a bit said. of confusion james cleverly said the spring but chancellor jeremy hunt said couldn't guarantee next year well, look, our plan isn't just about Rwanda. We've got a range of things in the toolbox. We've already reduced the number of people coming to Britain illegally across the channel by a third at a time when we're seeing an increase in illegal migration in the rest of Europe. So we've made a lot of progress. But a key part but of it more, is Rwanda, isn't it? You know, you know, £140 million pounds has been spent on it. So people are keen to know whether this will definitely be going ahead and when it will be going ahead. No, no, you're right. It, it is an important part of the plan. That's why we responded very promptly on Wednesday following the Supreme Court's decision. The Supreme Court, by the way, made it clear that it was lawful to deport uh, those illegal migrants to a th safe third country. But there were some issues they set out. And, I th and the government believes that the concluding that new treaty with Rwanda, putting it into law, uh, and then bringing forward that emergency legislation so Parliament can set out really clearly what the position is, is how we're going to deliver the plan and get those flights away in the spring. So it's a very clear plan. We're determined to deliver it. You know, the government keeps its promises. We made a promise last year to halve inflation. People were sceptical, but we delivered it this week. We've made a promise to stop the boats. We're determined to deliver it. And the Prime Minister set out a clear plan on Wednesday, and the government is focused on making sure yeah. that happens. You made, well, you made five big promises. One's been delivered. Uh, the other ones are still a work in progress. I'm sure you agree. Let's talk about this investment that you want to share with everybody today. today. The government says that it's investing £8.3 billion to fix the UK's potholed, riddled roads. This is actually, before we talk to you, something we've heard before, isn't it? Let's just remind our viewers. We will reinvest every single penny we will resurface roads across the country. The money from, from HS2, we're going to see uh, even more cash as part of a 10-year plan for potholes as well. Uh, such a good policy, you're announcing it three times. Is this the same money that Rishi Sunak was talking about right back at the beginning of October? Yeah, it is the £8.3 billion we were talking about, the largest investment in local roads. What we're announcing today is the specific amounts of money that are going to local authorities. So today we're announcing £150 million in this financial year, £150 million next year. We're telling local authorities how much they're getting over the 11-year period so that they can plan properly to scale up their uh, road resurfacing systems to deliver it. Uh, and the fact we're going to set that out at local council level today means local authorities can now start spending that money uh, because until you announce what they're getting specifically, they can't start spending sure. it. So it's making that plan real, okay. which is what we're announcing today. Yeah. Uh, so £8 billion. Pounds. I mean, the headline is it's for potholes. But as you said, it's going to be down to the local authority to decide how and where they spend that money exactly. But the Asphalt Industry Alliance have already said that it's going to take £14 billion, pounds, not £8 billion, pounds, £14 billion pounds to fix all the roads in England and Wales. We know you're not across Wales, but of course... That 8 billion is nowhere near the amount that actually we need to fix the roads. 
Well, look, first of all, the industry welcomed our announcement today. And, and of course, the £8.3 billion is on top of the over £5 billion that the government has already made available to local authorities to uh, improve the quality of local roads. And this is the single largest investment there has ever been in the quality of local roads, able to be paid for from the decision the Prime Minister set out last month about cancelling the second phase of HS2. And it's the top priority of uh, drivers. 96% uh, of drivers want the quality of local roads improved. This money will enable local authorities to deliver it. We're yes. going to ensure that there's transparency about what they're spending the money on so their voters can hold them to account. And I think this plan will be welcomed by people up and down the country. OK, I mean, you know, it's obviously a good amount of, of money to be pledged, but, you know, as, as suggestions are, it's not going to be enough. And the reason that it's come about is because of underfunding on local roads, isn't it? Spending on local road repairs in the UK has been reduced by nearly half since 2006. That's according to the Local Government Association. If you compare it to other countries, how much they spend on their local road infrastructure, um, 2000, uh, since 2006, New Zealand, 178% more. Japan, 154% more. The USA, Austria, 152% more. And yet we have cut are spending on road repairs by nearly half. So that's why you're having to put this money in is because it's been underfunded for so many years. They're in a terrible state. Well, well look, f first of all, you're going way back there to actually when the last time the Labour Party was in power. I'm not going to start accounting for what they chose to do. As I said, we've made available £5 billion over this spending period for local councils to invest in local roads. This £8.3 billion that we're setting out today is on top of that. It's extra money. It's the largest amount of money that any government has invested in the quality of local roads. And it gives councils money this year, next year. We're setting out what they're going to get over the but subsequent period. we don't know that they'll necessarily spend it on fixing the potholes, do we? Well, what, what we're doing is local councils know that this is an important priority for their voters. It's the top priority for drivers and other road users, so cyclists and people that use mm. buses, for example. We're going to make sure uh, in the requirements of the money that they have to be accountable. They're going to have to publish what they're spending the money on, okay. account for every quarter so their local voters can hold them to account to make sure the money gets spent on what it's intended to be spent I on, mean, which is improving the quality of local roads. Undoubtedly, there have been more people on the roads over the last 18 months because of the misery we faced on the railways. Um, our viewers' hearts will have sunk yesterday uh, when, more, when, the, when Aslef uh, announced there was going to be more rolling programme of walkouts between the 2nd and the 8th of December. The unions have described you as missing in action when it comes to resolving this situation. When was the last time you sat down with the unions? Look, I I'll explain to your viewers the position. For the train drivers, paid an average of £60,000 a year for a 35-hour, four-day week, there is an offer on the table, which I facilitated when I became Transport Secretary. That offer is on the table. It would take their average salary to £65,000 a year yeah. for a 35-hour okay. full day. So the details it's on the that, table. we need what to resolve... Need to, Mr Hart, what we they need, need to do... What our viewers care about is resolving the problem. Now, I, you I, may well believe that the, the deal on the table is enough, but why don't you sit down and talk to them and try and explain why you think it's enough and hear what they have to say as well? I mean, it was Hugh Merriman, the rail minister, in January of this year, said it would have been cheaper to settle the pay dispute on the rails compared to the economic costs of the strikes. We just want you... Everybody wants to sit down to hear what's being said to try and hammer out whatever the deal is going to be acceptable for them. I think the problem is here is the difference between trade union barons who won't put the deal on the table to their members. I want their members to have the opportunity to say what they think about the deal. And they won't put that member to them. I welcome what the RMT has decided to do, which is take the fair and reasonable offer that's on the table, put it to their members in a ballot that closes at the end of this month. Um, and I hope that they do what they, their network rail colleagues did, which is overwhelmingly accept the offer. I don't know why the train drivers, uh, the union leadership, won't do the same. There's a fair and reasonable offer on the table for their members, taking their average salary to £65,000 a year. Now, I think most people listening to this will think that is a perfectly reasonable offer, taking their salaries from 60 to £65,000 a year. That's more money than most people in retail and hospitality get paid, the people that they're going to damage by going on strike. So I'd urge them to think again, 
put their offer to their members and let them decide whether they want to accept it or not. I think that's very reasonable, and I don't know what they, why they won't do that. You should get them on the programme and ask them. But maybe if you sat opposite them on a table, then maybe they might tell you. Do you not think that actually now is the time to try to get a resolution? When do you plan to next see them in person to talk well, look, about it? There, there is an offer on the table. What I'm not going to do is throw more taxpayers' money uh, at the trade union barons when they won't put a reasonable offer to their members. If we're talking about a face-to-face -face conversation rather than the, just throwing more money, but actually well, sitting down and talking about well, it. When people say they want you to sit down around the table, they mean they want you to throw more money at them. There is a fair and reasonable pay offer on the table. The finances of the rail industry at the moment are not sustainable because there's been a 30% drop in revenue because of the post-pandemic period. We've got okay. to get the rail finances back into shape. There is a fair and reasonable offer on the, pay yeah. uh, on the table. They yeah, should put it understand. to their members to resolve just, the dispute. I don't dispute. know how it's going to get resolved, though. Well, a good start will be taking the offer that's on the table and putting it to their members. That's what the RMT are doing. Okay. That's what the other trade unions are doing. Uh, the ASLEF union is being unreasonable, I think. They're very closely involved with the Labour Party. Uh, Mick Whelan sits on the Labour Party as national executive. Should take the offer that's on the table, put it to his members, All right. ask them what they think. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank Transport you Secretary. for joining us. Thank you.